All right, guys, let's continue. Um, and in this video, we will um, start skinning this uh, skeleton here, the simple skeleton that we have created in the last video. And um, what we need to do is to select one of the joints and then shift hold and click the skeleton or the, sorry, the mesh. And then we wanna click skin and bind skin. Um, so a few uh, ways to proceed with this is to um, use the built-in skinning tool that Maya has and uh, I am not really good at using that um, because I frankly I uh, um, well very let me just attach a few words to this so if you just select paint skin weights and um, you have your Um, okay, so as you can see, uh, right now all the influence is, or most of the influence is set on the root, and a little bit is on the range one here. It's the white says that it's uh, influenced, and uh, the black says it has no influence, and so on. So we can see that it attached some or uh, just generated some influences. Uh, which means that if uh, we were to go and click this guy here, for example, and move it, we can see that it's uh, affecting, being affected, uh, the movement of this joint now. Uh, it's affecting the mesh. But uh, when I pull this one, it's affecting the other side here and some of the other uh, branches as well. And we don't really want that. Um, so uh, what do you want to do? Um, just clicking this one. This shows the last uh, tool that we had active. Um, so what we want to do is to let me select that one. Oh. Is to um, yeah. Well, let, let me just say say something about this. The thing is, uh, as far as I understand this, because this was uh, I was kind of uh, banging my head into a wall with this, uh, is that if I um, if I try to paint with the weight of one, say for example uh, this one, and I want this to be uh, kind of 100% um, affected by uh, this, uh, I would do something like this, and then I would probably end up painting into this, and then I would have to go and delete that, and maybe I would delete uh, too much and so on and that would take me quite a while uh, that's one part of it and the other part is that uh, whenever I change this because I have a normalized weight set to interactive it will keep normalizing uh, the weights so whenever I this doesn't yield a weight of exactly one at least as I understand this, uh, so if somebody uh, with uh, very good at uh, skin white painting you know uh, a better way to use the built-in tool uh, can explain uh, or maybe even better post a better video of doing this uh, then that would be absolutely very cool um, but anyway um, so if you change to one of the other joints uh, you will and you keep doing this process over and over uh, for each of the um, the, the joint here, oops, I was black. You will um, eventually sometimes end up with some of the the skin weights being transferred here and there. And as far as I understand, this is because it uh, it's trying to normalize these, and uh, then it will eventually sometimes just dump some accessible weight values some random place, which will cause some weird uh, side effects. So it can be kind of a headache to work with. Um, so for this video, I'm just going to skip this part and do something else instead. Um, uh, you want to first go to this site called uh, NG Skin Tools and download the tools. And um, uh, as far as I know, it's free. Yeah. And um, once you have that downloaded, you will go ahead and install it. You can just follow the instructions um, 
and then you will end up having this tab here called ng skin tool uh, so when you click this little guy over here you will get this one over here so uh, with that you will click initialize skin layer and that will open up this one so the cool thing about this is that you can uh, work with layers that is as far as i can see uh, the real uh, power of this tool so um, let's pick the the root here for example and then click paint so as you can see here everything is filled with random weights here so um, first of all i'm gonna say replace and uh, i'm just gonna flood this all with once so um, we get rid of all that stuff okay um so uh, what we can do here is we can create a new layer called this we will create a, a layer for each branch uh, branch one so that makes everything turn black so if i then click uh, the branch one uh, joint which is the blue selected dot here is it may be a little bit hard to see on your screen but uh, it, it's up here so we're just going to zoom out again and turn it this way um, so the cool thing about this tool is that you can uh, now work with layers and uh, so if I go ahead and and just uh, have an intensity set to 1 and just um, uh, flood this with uh, ones also then uh, it will in initially um, all be affected by this so if I now take uh, this guy here and I move this around then the entire mesh is being controlled by this joint now which is kind of not what we want but uh, the cool thing is that we have a layer mask and uh, the layer mask is uh, if you have uh, well the layers is kind of working just like in Photoshop uh, and this is kind of the uh, I think it's you would compare this to a um, transparency so if I paint now uh, and I select my branch one uh, sorry uh, the layer here and I then uh, paint with uh, uh, from from the top uh, for the the end out here you can see everything turned black so uh, I paint on the layer mask so this is what is going to be uh, influenced so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint uh, pretty f uh, as close as I can to the uh, to the to the stem here really and uh, then I'm gonna click smooth and then flood and that's gonna um, smooth things out so um, if I'm not really satisfied with this I can always go back and and move it a little bit further down uh, whoops uh, I have a really really large uh, brush size right now um, so and then uh, let's click uh, yeah smooth and flood that's going to even things out so that's a bit uh, a, a bit easier way to do this so um, we'll continue to the next branch branch two and we're going to do the same click replace and we have a value of one and then select branch one and flood it with once so select the layer mask and locate the joint uh, for two where is it uh, up here as we can see this one is a selected one so we're going to click the layer mask again and then we're going to paint this with white and let's move out a little bit here and just fairly close to the uh, the stem and then sm nope. yep smooth and flat just click click it a few times every time you do it uh, it will uh, affect it all right um, so let's just continue with the branch three. Uh, select branch three, replace and flood. Locate the joint. It's uh, where did it go? Here. Layer mask. 
Um, paint. And smooth and flat, like that. And new layer, French four. So my French four is here. So again, replace uh, flat with once and go to the layer mask paint a little bit down guess uh, you should get the point by this uh, for now and it's smooth and flat okay so this one this one actually kind of select everything so here hold down b and Move a little bit to the side. Maybe set this just a little bit. Um, say something like this, and then uh, smooth. Yeah, something like that. And the reason why I I do this is just to get a little bit of. Um, variation to this so it, it's not like uh, it's it's com whoops it's uh, completely 100% um, influenced um, towards the stem so it's gonna some of the the, the parts very close to the stem is gonna be a little bit more static um, so that's kind of the reason why I do it um, so let's get the last branch uh, branch 5 selected and replace and flood and select the layer mask, find the joint. Where are you? Oh, I didn't select it. Awesome. Um, here it is. Um, layer mask, and we have a one. So Maybe make the brush size a little bit bigger. Okay, something like that, and smooth and flat. A few times. So um, that should actually be it. So uh, now we have um, everything set, and we can test this out. So if we select one of the joints. And then uh, move this one around. You can see that it's mostly uh, affecting uh, this. And if I move this, it is affecting some of the middle here. I won't do that. But um, since these will not be mo moving like that, they will be rotating. It's uh, it's going to be okay. So uh, we want to go ahead now and export this and see how it looks. So we're going to make a test. I'm just gonna keep call this uh, S uh, Fern One A, and I'm gonna turn down the volume. Okay, so let's go back into um, Unreal, and I'm just gonna import everything into my mannequin folder. I'm gonna keep everything here, just I, but I uh, suggest you organize this a little bit. Um, um, yeah, just so it don't don't get too messy. So you want to import a skeletal and import mesh and um, if we had several LODs we would check this one but I since I can't figure out how to get the LODs out for the other uh, meshes for this we can't really do that uh, so that's gonna have to be something I will look into later um, but for now did, did I just import anything? No. Um, just gonna import this as this and um, yeah, just ignore that. And that's gonna bring in our little fern again. So here is our fern. 
but now it's it's a uh, skeletal mesh and um, if we click into the, the asset uh, the physics asset we can see that it also has uh, some rigid bodies uh, attached already so if we simulate weird stuff is going to happen so uh, as you can see all the, the, the individual parts are floating around and uh, this is actually our starting point to um, set this up okay so uh, that is it for this video uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next bye bye